Howdy gang, and welcome back to Pool School. Hey, have you ever wondered exactly how many chlorine tablets you should be putting in your tablet floater for your particular size pool at any given time in any season? Well, in today's episode, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. So what do you say we jump right in? Alrighty, once again, before we get started, I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna also ask you to like this video if you do, subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, and please share this channel with your friends or people you know who have pools who are looking to learn a little more about it and how, how they can maintain their own pool themselves and save a few bucks. Okay, as I said at the beginning of this video, I have been getting a lot of emails, actually, from subscribers who have been asking how many chlorine tablets should I be putting in my chlorine dispenser uh, for this size pool or at this time of year? The honest to goodness answer, and I hope this doesn't confuse you if you're expecting specifics, the honest to goodness answer is it really depends. There's lots of things it depends on. It depends on the size of your pool, okay? And I'm gonna describe two different types. It also depends on the use of the pool, the temperature of the water, the temperature of the surrounding environment, the surrounding environment itself, and how many people and pets and things like that are getting into your pool as well, okay? So I'm gonna talk about all that because those factors all uh, are going to cause your pool to use or not use chemicals, okay? <clears throat> Before we get into it, there's a few videos, if you haven't watched already, that you might wanna watch. I'm assuming that you know how to test your pool chemistry. I'm assuming that you know how to adjust your alkalinity and your pH, and I also am assuming that you understand about cyanuric acid, which is also called conditioner or stabilizer, okay? If you have not educated yourself on those or you've not seen my videos on those, I've put a link to each of those in the description below this video. So the first one, how to test your pool chemistry. Second one, how to adjust the pH of your pool. Third one, how to adjust the alkalinity of your pool. And lastly, cyanuric acid or stabilizer and what you need to know about it. So make sure you watch those videos so that when we move, when I discuss those things here, <clears throat> that's not gonna be coming into play, okay? <clears throat> so with that said, I am assuming that your pool chemistry, as far as the pH and the alkalinity and your stabilizer, your cyanuric acid levels, are in the ideal range. If not, again, watch those videos and get those adjusted, all right? But people have asked me, well, how much, how many tablets should I put in a floater? And again, I'm gonna grab one of these. This is a typical floater. This is the size I use for my standard play pools, and we'll discuss the type of pool in a moment. There's a larger one that is longer down here where my fingers are, and it holds more tablets, and that one I use usually for my diving pools, okay? So, let's describe the uh, something really quick. Remember I talked about the different factors that are gonna affect how your pool uses chemicals? Well, if you live like where I live in Arizona, it's really, really hot. We get to be 115, 118 degrees in the summertime. And so you're gonna get a lot of evaporation of your pool water and chemicals, and the sun is gonna deteriorate a lot of those chemicals as well, and <clears throat> you're gonna get a lot of people using the pool, including pets, and that's gonna, all of that is gonna create a demand on your chlorine. So it's going to vary. That's why in your test strips, it talks about the ideal ranges, okay? If you notice here, I'm gonna show you this. There, did I get this the right way up? Uh, there we go. There's a range. You see the little arrows? Okay. There's a range of what is ideal. And that range gives you some wiggle room. So don't get too, try to be too, too precise on this. It's not an exact science. Now, you can go online <clears throat> and I know you can find charts and you can find actually calculators that you enter in how many, how many, how big your pool is, how many gallons it is. And it can tell you how much of a certain chemical you need to add, like chlorine, usually they're talking about liquid or granular chlorine, in order to raise the level to a certain, a, a certain amount. So let's say you're at a 1.0 in your chlorine, all right? And then it says, okay, if you have this size pool, it's this many gallons, then you add this much liquid chlorine and that should raise it one additional point, all right? I don't use those, I never have, because again, there's a lot of different variables that come into play. What I suggest is just 
doing what I do, get to know your pool. So here's some thoughts. Number one, um, <clears throat> there are two types of pools. So let's talk about the different types of pool. I'm gonna describe two types of pool. One is a play pool. That's the typical pool that doesn't have a deep end where you could dive into it without hitting your head on the bottom really fast. Those are typically anywhere from 10 to 15,000 gallons. Um, and they usually are only about five feet deep at their deepest. You know, they go between four and five feet. And so that's very typical in Arizona. And again, between 10 and 15,000 gallons. The other pool is what they call a diving pool, which means it has a deep end, usually about eight and a half to nine feet deep, depending on your building codes in your particular area. Um, but they are pools that even without a diving board, you can dive into without risking hurting your neck or slamming into the bottom of the pool too quickly. So those usually run about, oh, anywhere between 15 to 25,000 gallons. And then there's the really exotic big pools, and I'm not talking about commercial pools. I had one client who had a pool where he actually taught scuba diving, and that pool was 18 feet deep at the deepest area. And so it was a real beast to, to maintain, but uh, I'm assuming you don't have one of those. So I'm going to be talking about regular play pools and be talking about diving pools. All right. So <clears throat> remember what I talked about, the different factors that affect the use of your chemicals. All right. And that's super, super important because, again, it's not rocket science. This is one of the reasons I tell you you should test your pool water on a weekly basis. I, I, I tell people my pool service is a weekly pool service, and that is that is more than adequate to maintain a typical residential pool, at least out in here in Arizona where I live, okay? But <clears throat> I tell people to not worry too much about the exacts. If you're testing your chemistry on a weekly basis, you will very quickly be able to figure out how much your pool is using and what it needs at any given time in any given season, okay? And it's gonna vary because of the use. If you have a big pool party, you're gonna create a greater demand and you might have to shock your pool just to get your chlorine levels up. But let's assume that everything is right in your pool and everything's working well, okay? So here are my basic guidelines on how many tablets I use for most of my play pools and my diving pool. So I'm gonna start with a play pool, okay? Again, as I said before, I'm gonna grab this floater. On a play pool, I'm gonna use one of these floating chlorinators, all right? These are really good, I love these. They're inexpensive, they're not cute, but I think they do the job well. I don't like the really cute ones because the really cute ones uh, uh, sometimes can be problematic with the, the amount of the, the windows here that open up, okay? Now for larger diving pools, they have one of these that is bigger. This one here holds about five tablets, okay? The larger one, holds up to nine tablets, all right? So again, I just, those are the two different types of floating chlorinating ta uh, tablet holders that I use, okay? I'm not talking about erosion um, type chlorinators right now because those are different and they only work when the system's running because they erode the chlorine and then force that concentrated um, substance into the pool. We're not talking about that. We're talking about just plain old ordinary tablet floaters, okay? So here we go. For a play pool with the regular size chlorinator or the regular size tablet floater, okay? In the off season, I will use anywhere from one to two tablets per month. Now make note of that, I said per month. One to two tablets per month. And again, I'm testing on a weekly basis and sometimes I've gone two months without just one tablet in there depending on the climate. When it's cold, there have been times when I haven't had to use chlorine except for maybe one tablet every couple months. But a good guideline is one to two tablets every month in the off season. Now that doesn't mean you throw it in there and you don't check your pool for a month or two. Remember, I'm talking about you checking your pool water on a weekly basis if you're using tablets. If you're using liquid chlorine or granular chlorine, you're probably gonna have to test your, temp your chemistry more often because that's gonna dissipate and evaporate much quicker than tablets will, okay? Or than chlorine in tablets, okay? So make sure you understand that I'm talking about chlorine tablets, all right? So one to two tablets for your play pool per month in the off season. In the peak season, that same play pool, I will go through anywhere between three and five tablets per week, okay? Yes, you heard me right, three to five tablets per week, all right? So obviously in the off season, we're talking about how many tablets per month. 
in the on season or the peak season, we're talking about how many tablets per week. So please make note of that, okay? Now, if you have a larger diving pool, okay, and I've described that earlier, you're going to probably use in the larger tablet floater, which I definitely recommend using that if you have a, a diving pool because you can have the potential to hold more tablets should you or when you need them. For those pools in the off season, I will use anywhere from one to three tablets per month in the, in the off season or the colder season. And again, one to three tablets per month, all right? And then in the summertime, during the, during, the, during the high peak season where people are swimming in the pools, I will usually go through anywhere between five to nine tablets per week. All right, and it's gonna vary depending on the pool and the use and all that, okay? So again, five to nine tablets per week in the larger play pools during the peak season, okay? So those are my general guidelines. Now, again, if you're testing your pool water on a weekly basis, you'll start to get a feel for your particular pool and how it holds chemistry and how the chemicals are being used, and you'll be able to adjust it, maybe one week, in the, in the swim season, you'll use three tablets. And then the next week, you'll go, wow, I'm doing good. Uh, haven't been a lot of people in the pool, so I'm just going to use two tablets because your chlorine levels are still high, are still up in the a higher level of the ideal range. That's totally okay. And that's what I'm talking about. You can adjust as you go. And the key is consistently checking your pool chemistry on at least a weekly basis. You don't have to test it every day if you're using chlorine tablets. Uh, I would suggest you doing it every couple days if you're using liquid or granular chlorine, as I stated earlier. Okay? And again, it's not, a, it's not a, an exact science, so it's going to vary. Now, let's say during the peak season, you have some big pool party and you're normally using X amount of chlorine tablets and you got this big pool party. I always recommend if you have a big pool party or a major storm or something, that when it's over, the pool party or the major storm, you go out and you test your chemistry, okay? Even it was the day after you did, did your, your weekly service. Chances are you might see that you need some more chlorine. If that's the case, then you can do it one of two ways. Either grab a, a couple gallons of liquid chlorine at your, your pool supply store, or you can get them at a Walmart. I've seen them at Target and Costco. And just with your filter running, add a quart or two or three and let it dissipate and distribute in your pool and then test your chemistry. And that should bring your pool chlorine levels back up, all right? Um, I like the liquid chlorine because it gets in there quicker, all right? But that's pretty much what it comes down to when it comes to dealing with how many chlorine tablets you should use. So remember, it's not an exact science. I'm just going to summarize again. For a play pool, right, which doesn't have a deep diving end, with a regular pool chlorinator, and again, I'm speaking from my experience in the climate of Arizona, based on our seasons. In the off season, when it's cooler and nobody's in the pool, you're going to use anywhere between one to two tablets per month. And then the peak season, that same play pool will probably use between three to five tablets per week, all right? And then when you get into the larger diving style pools, in the larger tablet floater, you're going to use, during the off season, maybe two to three tablets, maybe one to three tablets per month, okay? in the cooler season, and then in the peak season, you're probably gonna use anywhere between five to nine tablets per week, all right? So, there you have it, folks. That's pretty much how it works. Okay, one more quick thing. So let's say you have a pool and your chlorine levels are really low, and you you notice your floater is out of chlorine tablets and you need to get your chlorine levels up, okay? So again, I'm assuming that your pH, alkalinity, and cyanuric acid stabilizer levels are in the ideal range, okay? Again, watch those videos if you haven't done so already. What I would suggest to do is this. Number one, based on the season, get the amount of chlorine tablets that I kind of suggest as a guideline into that floater and put it in the pool. Then, immediately, or at the same time, Run your pool equipment, run your filtering equipment so the water's moving around. Grab yourself a gallon of liquid chlorine or a pound or two of shock, all right? If you haven't seen my video on shocks, uh, check it out. I describe a couple different shocks and I'll put a link to that one in the description below this video as well. But you're gonna run your equipment, okay? And again, you've tested your water and you go, oh my gosh, I have zero chlorine or my chlorine levels at a 1.0, all right? And so it's too low. All right, so you're gonna run your equipment. You're gonna take a gallon of liquid chlorine, take about half a gallon, 
half of that and just distribute it around the perimeter of your pool. If it's a pound of shock, just take the pound of shock and sprinkle it around the, the perimeter of your pool. Let your pool run for a couple hours, right? Let the equipment run for a couple hours to distribute and move the chemicals around the pool. Then test your chemistry. Chances are your chlorine levels will be back up. And then because you have the tablets in your floater, you should be okay. You might want to wait a couple more days just to check it again, but you should be okay. But if not, just repeat the process. Keep the tablets in the, in the floater and keep the equipment running. Throw in another pound of shock or another quart or two of the liquid chlorine while the equipment's running. Let it distribute around. A couple hours later, test it and you should be back up and running, okay? So um, that's pretty much how you do it. It's not that hard. It's actually pretty simple. Alrighty gang, so that is my video on how many chlorine tablets you should be using in your particular pool. Remember that this is based on the climate and environment that we have in Arizona. Really hot in the summer and sometimes it gets downright freezing in the winter. It may vary in your area and your experience might be a little different and that's the key. If you're testing your chemistry on a weekly basis, you're going to see and discover how your pool works and the demand on that pool for chemistry or chemicals, and you'll be flying high in no time at all. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them in this, uh, the comment section below this video, or you can email me directly, and my email address is going to come right across the screen, screen here. As always, it's Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. Remember again, it's not an exact science because you have a pool that the, the water is constantly evaporating and the environment and the climate is affecting your pool chemistry. That's why there's ranges that are ideal. If you're keeping your chemistry in those ideal ranges, you should be fine. Just remember, test your chemistry about once a week. Okay, so that way you can keep up on it. So that's my video. I thank you again for watching. I want to remind you to like, subscribe to this channel, and share this channel with your friends if you feel so inclined. And until we meet again, please remember, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and pets around water. And we'll see you next time.